thank you for taking out, uh, you know, some time out of your busy schedule. I know it's hectic for you. It's about to be fight week. So I got a few questions, and I'm going to let you get up out of here. For sure, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, appreciate it. Uh, first off, how has uh, training camp been going? Man, training camp's been great. Um, everything from the sparring to the strength and conditioning, heavy bag work, the mitts, the runs, the sprints, uh, everything. Everything's just been uh, A1. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking things to a new, new level, and I'm excited to show the world uh, January 13th. Uh, that's how good I've gotten. So I'm taking things to a new level for sure. Definitely glad to hear that. Um, any notable names you spar with um, in preparation for uh, Jose Ugatage, or has it just been your regular crew you you know spar with before? Uh, no, we um, this camp we sparred with uh, Ahmed Abiali, 175 pounder who uh, uh, by John Pascal, and he'll be fighting on January 13th too. So big, rough, tough guy, um, talented dude. So yeah, it's been great to have him in camp. Um, a, couple other, a couple other different guys, but uh, he's probably been one of my toughest sparring partners. Okay, so I know you broke your left hand uh, last summer, and I know we months we you know we were months removed from that. But is everything one hundred percent healed and ready to go um, regarding the left hand? Uh, yeah, left hand felt great. I've been letting it go harder than ever in sparring. Been letting it go hard on the bag. Um, you know, when I first uh, was able to go back to the gym and start touching, I eased my way in. Um, each day, you know, I pick up just a little bit, just a little bit. I wanted to ease my way in. But uh, once we were given the green light, I just told myself it's going to be what's going to be. And so I just started letting it go, and it held up great. So I don't I don't really expect there to be uh, any issues on fight night. Definitely glad to hear that. Without giving away too much of your game plan, what weaknesses, you know, do you see in um, Ugatage's game um, that you plan to exploit come next Saturday night? Um, you know, I feel like I'm just the better boxer all around. I feel like I got the better footwork. I feel like I got faster feet. I feel like I got faster hands. I feel like I got better ring IQ. I feel like I got uh, better defense. Um, and, uh, yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, it's no specific game plan going in just to go in and make adjustments because I could go and tell you exactly what I plan on doing and exactly what I'm going to do. But, you know, at the end of the day, we know boxing doesn't always work out like that. you got to make adjustments on the fly. And um, fortunately for our team, we've we got the ability to do that. So we're going to go in there nice and relaxed and make adjustments as needed. So. Exactly. Okay. Um. A lot of people, when you look at Ugatage, he's more um than just a you know a power puncher. He does some subtle things in there. He, he's able to cut the ring off, you know, counter uh, a well. And you know, like you said, you believe that he has you know, that you had a superior skill set all around. Um. But when I think of that, I can kind of can compare you. Don't want to compare you to Andre Durrell, who you know at one point in time was you know rated highly. He's very athletic, very elusive, very quick on his feet. And he was able to, you know, be neutralized by, um, you know, Ugatake in their two fights. So is there anything, you know, you see from those matchups that, you know, you've kind of implemented in your training camp to make sure that doesn't happen with you? Uh, I mean, we may have some of the um, same attributes, but I feel like we have very different styles. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, the key words, or the key words, what you said was at one time. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. But that was not a prime uh, derail. You, you understand? And he, a lot of um, his success has come from his attributes. But boxing is a lot more than just attributes. You know, we can ask Roy Jones that. Yeah, yeah. Some, your attributes are only going to take you so so far, and at some point, someone with skills and Bernard Hopkins, I mean, skills and fundamentals like Bernard Hopkins, that's what's going to carry. You. That's what's going to keep you in the game. That's what's going to give you longevity. And um, while we, like I said, while we have some of the same attributes, I feel like we have very different styles. So I know everyone's thinking, "Oh my God, look what he did to Darrell," but I can promise you, there are numerous ways where I'm nothing like that man and he's nothing like me 
January 13th, I plan on showing the world that. So definitely respect it. In your fight against Porky Medina, you showed him. You showed a lot. You know, you showed versatility that some people may have not seen as a pro from you. You know, you sit in the pocket. You were able to, uh, you know, sit and sit down on your punches and exchange some big shots as well as box and move. And uh, you'd be surprised. A lot of people are picking you. You know, what I'm saying I don't know if you're surprised. Of course, you're confident in yourself, but a lot of people are picking you uh, to win this fight. So. That makes it makes it even more intriguing, and like I said, a lot of people are doing it off your last performance against Medina, Medina because they was wanting to see you, you know, against an experienced, tough, rugged guy with a similar, you know, fighting style to Uga Tiger, and you impressed a lot of people with this. So this fight is definitely one of the more intriguing uh, fights of, in boxing period, but especially at 168. Yeah. Um... You know, I know that the, uh, Jose, he's a better version of the style than Porky has, but I'm also a better version of the Caleb Plant that I was in the Medina fight. And uh, I don't expect anyone to take my word for that. Uh, I'd rather just, you know, I'd rather show the world and people just, you know, if they feel like it's a bandwagon that people are jumping on and you're skeptical, then, then I encourage you to not jump on it. Because I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want to show the world what I'm capable of. So, uh, people who don't think I can get the job done, people who think I'm just hype, people who think that um, I haven't gotten any better, I just encourage them to tune in January 13th. And uh, I'm thinking that I can change their minds. So, I know that this is a, uh, a big fight. And on paper, I know how good it looks. And um, I think that they'll be pleased if they tune in that night. Yeah, like a last few few more questions. I'm gonna let you go. What are your overall thoughts on the whole 168 pound division? Because a couple weeks ago we had uh, the rematch between Gilberto Ramirez and Jesse Hart, another uh, close uh, hard fought uh, battle. As well as you know, you still got um, David Benavidez and you got Uga Tage and even Dur the Durrell brothers to a lesser extent. So, what are your um, thoughts on the, on the overall 168 division as it stands today? Uh, I think it's a great division. I feel like right now, I feel like you would agree with me. The super middleweight division is hotter than it's ever been. Definitely, in the long in the last few years, it definitely um, has oh, yeah. a lot of deep, deep talent. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, it's hotter than it's ever been, but at the same time, no one's really taking the reins and taking control of the division. No one's really, really uh, stood out, just taking complete control of the division. Callum Smith at this point might may be the closest to doing that, but he hasn't quite taken the reins to where he's in full control of the division yet. Um, so I feel like it's a lot of talent, a lot of good names. Um, but January 13th, I feel like I'm going to be I'm on the start phase one to taking those reins and taking control of the division. So. Devin, I know you're from Nashville, and I'm from Alabama, so you up the street from me. So assuming you win this fight, I know you plan on bringing a big title fight to Nashville, right? Oh, yeah, that's the plan. We got, uh, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they hatch, and I don't like to look at other people's plates of food because if you look at them for too long, you'll look up and there's no food on your plate. True. But uh, we definitely got something big uh, possibly brewing for uh, the Bridgestone Arena where the Predators play right downtown in Nashville. First things first, we're going to handle, handle business January 13th. Become a world champ, get that IBF strap, and uh, we'll go on to bigger and better things. Because, yeah, we're definitely looking to bring something to Nashville, for sure. Hey, man, if you make it happen, I definitely will be in attendance. Um, you can let the people know where they can reach you on social media before you get out of here. Uh, yeah, anybody looking to... You know, follow me, stay tuned, see what me and the team got going on, see our future plans. You can follow me at Sweet Hands Plant on Twitter and at Caleb Plant on Instagram. Hey, man, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Hey, when you get this victory, if you get it, we can do this again. Um, I wish you the best of luck, not only in this fight, but the rest of your career. And look forward to next Saturday night. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Jarrell. Hey, thank, thank you, you Mario. Y'all have a good night. Okay, bro. Okay. Bye, right, bro. There you have it. Just wrapped up an interview with the number one IBF contender, Caleb Sweet Hands Plant. He will be taking on Jose Ucatagate January 13th. 
for that IBF super middleweight title. If you enjoyed this interview, please hit that like button. Drop a comment in the comment section down below giving me your thoughts as well as a prediction to next weekend's highly anticipated super middleweight fight between these two skillful super middleweights. And again, stay tuned. Next Saturday night, Jose Ugatage will be making the second defense of his IBF super middleweight title against undefeated Caleb Sweethands Plant. Um, that fight is taking place live on Fox. I believe it's going to be in California. So if you're in the area, California area, go and get your tickets, support the PBC um, fight card. And like I said, man, like this video, subscribe to Colossal Sports TV as well as 3kingsboxing.com on YouTube. Go like the 3kingsboxing.com Facebook page. Be sure to subscribe to the website 3kingsboxing.com. Turn your notifications on. Until next time, I am out. Peace.